Into the Unknown from Frozen 2 was just nominated at the Oscars for Best Original Song, and I'm here with the songwriters behind it, Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez. I'm hey. Kevin Jacobson. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby. First off, asking the both of you straight up, you know, in your own words, what does Into the Unknown represent as far as Elsa's journey and how she's sort of matured since the first film? Uh, Into the Unknown is sort of that that beautiful restlessness that we all have in our early 20s um, that is the catalyst for the adventure into adulthood, I think. So it's and it we found this metaphor for that restlessness in the voice, which is singing sort of the DS era. Yeah. Ah! And it's she's calling to her and it's it's suggesting there's a dangerous path ahead. But um, but it's also something that Elsa can't resist. And it's really if she feels like it's calling her to her purpose. Yeah. And, um, you know, let it go from the first Frozen was this gigantic anthemic song that was really sort of inescapable and, and still is. And you mm -hmm. want an Oscar for it. So. When it came to Into the Unknown, how much of just Let It Go was in the back of your minds when you were writing what was essentially what was going to be known as somewhat of a follow-up to that? We were very lucky in that we were working with amazing collaborators, Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck, who right from the get-go said, we're not going to try and do the first film. We're going to do... We're going to work the same way though and talk and research and make sure we are writing something that we all care about. Um, and we are all parents of children who are much older. And, you know, we are six years, six years down the line. We had little kids. Now, uh, we and Jennifer Lee are parenting teenagers who, and our job is to let them go into the unknown and chart their own path. So I think in that way, it really tapped into something we were really excited to explore. And Into the Unknown is the beginning of that. It's that, it's that call. She's found acceptance. Let it, let it go is a bit of a rebellion saying, here's who I am and I don't care what anybody thinks. Now she's found acceptance and has a solid family, but now she has to do the hard work of finding out what is it that she wants for the first time? Yeah, and the, the other big difference is that she is the protagonist of this movie, whereas she was not she was not really the main character of Frozen One. Um, and this song is the I Want song. It launches the story. It's about what drives Elsa, the joy that she is looking for in her life, the joy that's missing from her life, um, is what she's trying to get all the time. Mm -hmm. And then the triptych there at the end is show yourself, which is the arrival to yeah. her true purpose. But I think let it go into the unknown and show yourself do work as as a story in a, of themselves, of somebody who has never been themselves and then finally says, hey, I need to be myself. And then begins the hard work of trying to figure out what is myself and then arrives. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful arc there. And something I've learned a little bit more about over the past few years is this idea of text painting in music, you know, where musically the melody is really mirroring the actual meaning behind the song and communicates the emotion. And Kristen, yeah. I've heard you talk in another interview about what you guys did with the chorus, especially with Into the Unknown. And it's such a great example of that. So can you just sort of talk us through what you did there in that chorus? Sure. Sure. And then Bobby should tell, tell you a little bit about the DSRA because he talked, when he talks about the DSRA, it's really sexy. <laughs> um, uh, but in the chorus, we realized when we were writing it, uh, I was, we were sort of improving it, but I realized after the fact I had done into the unknown, do, do. It's an octave. It's safe. It's what we know. The and then into the unknown is like, Stepping your foot outside of the boundary, but pulling it right back because it's scary. And then into the unknown. That's an 11th. Um, and it is truly saying, you know what? I'm going for it. Yeah, they, in, in school, they tell you don't write. Don't. <laughs> in songwriting school, they say, you know, please avoid this interval at all costs. Um, <laughs> but but, but it, it, it does paint that idea of 
someone having to go way beyond the boundaries of where they're comfortable. And, and Elsa uh, has left the building. Uh, and that tune that, that it goes into, you know, the unknown, uh, that's the tune that the voice has been singing. And it's uh, a very um, sort of pregnant musical phrase called the Dies Irae, which is all about, uh, it's, it comes from early, early in music's history. You know, it's all about um, the day of judgment and it's, it's, um, it, it represents death or danger. It's been in so much wonderful pop culture. It's in Sweeney Todd. It's in Star Wars. It's in Home Alone. It's in The Shining. It's in like all your favorite stuff buried in there. But our friend Lynn well pointed out after we saw screening with him, um, he said, you guys kept teasing us with the ah, 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 and then he sings that song so that when she gets there, it's an arrival, mm -hmm. which is basically telling the story. The story we're going to be telling is Elsa stepping outside of the boundaries, growing and arriving at herself. And we said to Lynn, well, that's why I wrote it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, <laughs> And when you go back to just like the early stages of writing into the unknown, how much of what we hear in this final version was present in those earlier stages? You know, like were there major differences in melody or lyrics when you were sort of first starting off? Well, Bobby had written this amazing vamp that had more of a like do 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 it was three in the morning, so uh, the st in the story, in the story. Where the song begins. Yeah. So, so I said, "Hey, how can we do? We've got to launch into the song. It's three in the morning. No one can hear her. She can't come in too hot." So he sort of, I said, "Can you make it like three in the morning? Um, you're talking to your brain, and you're up, and you're walking the halls." So he made it a lot more sort of mystic. Yeah, I put it up a few octaves. I made it quiet. I made it minor. If, out of the sixth, and, uh, you know. If there was a piano here, he could show you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the other thing that happened was we had written a song before Into the Unknown for the same slot, and it hadn't. It didn't have the voice. The voice wasn't in the movie yet. And um, it just, you could feel that the same kind of song, but without the voice, just didn't have the drama and felt a little like a retread of of territory of just you know explored by let it go so um, it was nice to discover um discover that that structural difference of having the voice yeah and a duet with something she wants uh made it very different and got us excited yeah, mm, yeah. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, how plugged in you guys are with fans, but I was curious how the response has been to Into the Unknown, just, you know, from audience members, families with younger kids, for example, just what's what's that been like, the response? My daughter just said, hey, mom, there's this thing called TikTok. You should probably oh, go no. on there <laughs> because there's like eight million versions of your song on there. So I joined TikTok. I have one follower. It's my daughter. Um, but I did, uh, I did get to see this incredible creativity that's out there responding to the song. People are doing it a cappella. People are doing these beautiful, like, lip syncs to it. Yeah, with all these kind of crazy filters, sparkly. I don't know how they do it. Like, I wish I had been a kid at this time. Like, it's very cool. The other thing that was really fun is um, someone posted a video. A, a guy just went into a mall and went, Ah, and you hear all these kids just suddenly go, ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like West Side Story. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> um, and, you know, you were in a bit of a unique situation where this is a musical sequel, which we really don't see a lot of, especially these right. days. So how did you just go about approaching the full breadth of all of the songs in the film compared to the first one well the one thing we one thing we kind of tacitly agreed not to do was to go back to disney princess land in that same way that we had done in um you know for the first time in forever that's a that's a disney princess kind of song um alan menkin-ish howard ashman-ish and we, who we love who we love and I mean, obviously. who also you know what we were playing in that playground especially with anna who is a fairy tale character, first time in forever, was right. completely, and Love is an Open Door, were influenced by that modern Disney princess. 
that sound. But we didn't, we wanted this to feel different. <clears throat> we wanted to, it to feel like its own thing. And so for Anna, we, we went to this earthy, more folksy place, uh, folk rock kind of, uh, for some things never change. And then, um, for this, for her sort of, almost dirge her dark, night, uh, of the dark night of the soul um we we really uh we really brought it to a mournful place with strings like almost like adagio for strings yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, it, 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 that was really kind of the, the inspiration for that one musically and then everything else we we you know elsa was obviously the word was epic we wanted to show that she was a mythic character with a tragic um bent and um and that uh so everything had a very pop opera feel we we really wanted to 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 go there and um uh yeah, yeah. i mean everything else we tried to write mus more musically complex stuff for frozen too it's a little bit older and we all look a little bit older yeah. too <laughs> and a little bit darker too yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and i i did want to ask you specifically about another song you mentioned show yourself um sort of the climax in a way of the film really empowering moments i remember getting chills just watching it in theaters you know especially combined with the visuals and, you know, a lot of people felt it was right up there with Into the Unknown as one of the best songs in the film, if not the best. So can you just talk about the process of writing that song in particular? Yes. And actually there's a documentary that's going to be on Disney plus that follows us. Um, and it shows you just how hard show yourself was because it needed to be the culmination of frozen one and frozen two. And it needed to be Elsa's arrival, and it needed to solve a lot of the mysteries that are driving the whole movie. But that was before we were writing it before we had fully crystallized all the parts of the mystery. So yeah. um, it was it was a tricky one, and it took about six months. Um, of yeah. different versions of it. I mean, it, the first first version was six minutes long and had a totally different ending content wise. And it, um, you know, and that, it took us a month to write that. And then the storyboard artist, you know, came back. It was a lot of chicken and egging and a lot of, and at one point we nearly threw the whole thing out. Um, but, but we were able to kind of, um, navigate the tough course and figure out, oh, it needs to begin quietly and it needs to end with a lullaby. And I think those two, those were the two, um, those are the two choices that really right. uh, fixed it. Realizing that we had come, my darling, homeward bound, and she could go, I am found. And we could sort of bring all the pieces of her journey from the very beginning and into the unknown and this show yourself all together. Um, just took a while. Yeah. But I'm proud of it because my 14-year-old daughter feels like it speaks to her and says that she's allowed to go out into the world and show herself her path. And if like that alone, I have done my work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Um, well, thank you so much, Kristen and Robert for talking to gold Derby today. We really appreciate it. And congrats again on your Oscar nominations. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.